I'm joined today by Bill Resigliano. He's an attorney from RF Injury Law. They have offices on Bergenland Avenue in West New York, as well as in New York City. Bill, thanks for being with me today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. I wanted to have you on to talk about a specific topic and the specific case that you were involved in um, that landed your client a, a pretty good sum of money. Um, there was a woman involved in a mild traumatic injury incident. Can you explain what exactly happened, where it took place, and what the outcome was? Sure. So our client was crossing at the intersection of um, 8th Avenue and West 26th Street in Manhattan. Uh, she was crossing the street in the crosswalk, and there was a bicycle messenger who was in the course and scope of his employment who struck her with his bicycle. The difficult part of the case, or one of the difficult things about the case was she fell, struck her head, and was knocked unconscious and did not recall uh, the incident at all. So she recalled a little bit about what happened before, uh, but the, but she did not recall the actual impact. The, the next thing she knew, she was in the hospital and her relatives were there. So that made the case a little bit better. But as you mentioned, she did suffer a, a traumatic brain injury. Uh, traumatic brain injuries or TBIs are usually classified as either mild, moderate, or severe. This one was classified as a mild a traumatic brain injury. Now, we should mention um, the woman that was struck by the, the bicycle messenger. She was a senior citizen. She is a senior citizen. I believe you had told me uh, she was 70 years old. Um, cases like this, as, as you started to mention, because she suffered that that memory loss of the incident itself, I guess that that puts a lot of, um, of a burden on you, uh, in a sense, to try and um, negotiate this as best you can. Um, what is the the normal outcome of a case like this in general terms? And in this specific incident, what actually was the result? Well, we've had great success with our traumatic brain injury cases. Uh, there's various reasons for that, which I'm happy to go into. Um, this particular case was challenging, not only because she didn't recall any of the specifics of the incident, but anytime you have a mild traumatic brain injury case, the defense was always, well, we just don't buy the, uh, the brain injury. In this particular case, uh, as far as the liability was concerned or, or, or how we went about proving how the incident occurred, I took a deposition of the police officer who responded to the scene. I obviously deposed the bicyclist, which was also a challenge because he was unavailable for a good part of the litigation. But then we also had an accident reconstructionist who pieced together and re, uh, recreated how the incident occurred. The challenge on the brain injury uh, was, of course, proving that the impact actually caused a head injury. And the way that we went about doing that was we hired a biomechanical engineer, which is a scientific expert that discusses the degree of force that was exerted when the incident occurred. But the other thing that really helped us was our client was admitted to something called the TBI waiver program. And that is a program, a funded program, where the clients receive various accommodation and help related to the traumatic brain injury. And you have to really have a, a, a significant TBI in order to qualify. So in this particular case, we had those things for us. We were able to recreate the accident and establish that my client was in the crosswalk, that she was hit by the bicycle, that she struck her head, and that all of that caused, caused the traumatic brain injury for which she had and still has residuals. At the time that we settled the case, she was actively treating for the head injury. Is is this something that doctors have said over time she will, you know, fully recover? No. It, once you the 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 bar is usually six months. If a client has not recovered from the effects of a head injury after six months, the likelihood of any long term relief is very, very rare. Most of, they can get better, but usually if you've had an ongoing or ongoing issues from a head trauma that lasts six months or longer, 
you're not going to be fully resolved. And that's really the problem with these head injury cases is you have to first detect that there's actually head injury and then be aware that if someone's still having issues six months post accident, they're probably going to have them for the rest of their life. When the, when the bike messenger struck her in the intersection, um, I, I'm assuming that your client was crossing with traffic, you know, legally as opposed to crossing on a don't cross sign um and the person that did the striking on the bicycle was in the wrong was crossing illegally am i assuming that correctly well as in most cases his story was that she was not in the crosswalk but once i deposed the police officer who was immediately on the scene we were able to establish that she was in fact in the crosswalk the other way we were able to establish the negligence or the fault of the of the bike messenger was he was behind the box truck and he moved to the right and passed the box truck on the right. And as he was doing that, because he was passing the truck, didn't see the client. And all of a sudden she was in front of him and he struck her. So uh, the defense was she walked in front of the box truck against the light outside the crosswalk but in the end we were able to establish that in fact she had the light and was walking in the crosswalk at the time and that just came from again the accident reconstruction the testimony of the bicycle messenger and also most importantly the police officer who first responded to the scene um i don't know if you want to i don't know if you're you're legally allowed to um can you tell us what the 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 monetary uh, award for her was, and how is that in line with what normal awards are, are like in cases like this? Can you discuss that at all? Yeah, so we, we published the 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 um, the result. I will tell you that it was a seven figure result, which is very very rare. Uh, not for us, but it's very rare in general for a case only involving a traumatic brain injury. Normally when you see settlements in the seven figure range where there's a traumatic brain injury, they're usually accompanied by physical injuries as well, broken limbs, surgeries. This client only had a traumatic brain injury. That was her only injury. She also had some economic damages. There are two types of damages in, in these cases. One is what we call economic damages. And economic damages are usually future the cost of future medical care uh, and or lost earnings. My client was not employed at the time of the incident, but she did have a, um, a future medical care that was going to be uh, substantial. So she had that economic portion. Uh, Non-economic damages are damages that a jury could potentially award just uh, for the injury itself. Um, now they don't break it down once you settle a case, but I think because of the strength of our proof, I think because in the end, the defendants were aware that my client had a legitimate traumatic brain injury. Uh, and because of her economic damage component, we were able to get her a successful result, which, as I said, we, we've done that before in other cases involving just a traumatic brain injury. But it's rare, very rare to get that kind of figure uh, in a case that's, that only involves a mild traumatic brain injury. Well, Bill, I want to thank you for joining us on Hudson TV to explain um, how these uh, types of cases are settled and what's involved. If um, anyone sees this and wants to get in touch uh, with your office in West New York, uh, all they need to do is reach out on your your website, which is rfinjurylaw.com. Right. Or you can, you're more than welcome to come to our office at 6509 Bergen Line in West New York. And you can, of course, always call the office 201-342-7995. Hey, Bill, again, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you, Jeff. You as well.